Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? I am doing great. I need to move my computer down just a little bit. There we are. That's better. On Facebook, I looked like I had a floating head. I like to show a little bit of the shoulders. I don't have that problem on uh, my camera. But anyway, well, I hope you had an awesome Monday. It, uh, I got some things done here today. This was my big accomplishment. Where is it? Mm. Oh. <laughs> my big accomplishment <laughs> for my second safety recall on my car. I have an appointment on July the 2nd at 1230. All right. Camera just went yellow. Okay, it's back. Anyway, that was my big accomplishment today. I was quite excited about that because they keep sending me these. And I've actually done this. I've actually done this, but they recalled the recall. So <laughs> I'd be so glad to get that taken care of. Because it's supposed to be very dangerous. It's supposed to be a very dangerous situation. Okay, well, what I want to talk to you about tonight is not that, but I'm quite excited about that. Uh, I want to talk to you about he still does, he still performs miracles. He being Jesus, he still performs miracles. So I have been watching the press conferences from Florida, which is a very sad situation. A lot of people are missing, just like September the 11th. You know, a lot of people, I don't believe this younger generation were not born in 2001, and so they don't remember, and they don't understand why they just can't go in there and dig people out. They don't understand that it's a process and that it is dangerous for the rescuers too. And so they have to do it methodically and they have to do one layer at a time so that they don't crush other people underneath the rubble. But anyway, some people are saying, oh, they, they could have done it a whole lot faster. I think they're doing great. I think under the circumstances, they're doing great. I think they were there like within five minutes and they haven't stopped working. The rescue uh, crew there in Florida, they say goes all over the country doing this. I mean, this is what they do. They don't usually do it in their home state, but they do it in other states and they do it in other countries. So it's just sad. I'm just praying. I'm praying for miracles. And uh, I believe that God still performs miracles. I don't believe that He has stopped. I have seen many in my life, and you probably have too. Well, let's jump into some prayer, and then we'll talk about this. And maybe you can share some things. I want to share with you some lyrics to the song that I shared today. I know Facebook has gotten to where you can't share your story anymore like you used to. And uh, I don't know why people change things and don't make them better, they make them worse. What was easy now is like not easy anymore. Okay, so I uh, let's jump into some prayer. God, we just thank you, God. We thank you that you are on your throne and you are in control, God. And you do still perform miracles, God. You have never stopped. You have been performing miracles all through your word, all through people's lives, God. The miracles have not stopped. And we just thank you, God. We thank you that you are our creator, our sustainer, our protector our provider, that you are our shelter in the storm. These people are in a storm, God, and I know that if they call out to you, that you will shelter them, that you will give them strength, that you will give them refuge, God. And just like you give us strength and refuge, 
God, you are mighty and powerful and magnificent, God. There is no God like you. God, you are loving and kind and compassionate and forgiving. You are patient, God. You want none to perish. God, thank you for calling me as your child. Thank you for loving me. I love you with my whole heart, my soul, my mind, and my strength. God, we just pray that you would open the eyes and the ears to the lost, God, that they, that the Holy Spirit would draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. God, we just pray that you would open their hearts to truth. And God, we pray for the prodigals to come home. We just pray, God, that you would draw them back to you, that they would repent, and that um, they would return to you, and that their relationship would be reconciled as new. God, we pray for all these people in Florida, God, especially these families that are waiting, that have been waiting for days. God, we pray that you would give them peace. We pray that you would give them comfort, and we pray that you would give them strength to, to keep waiting if that's what it takes. God, we pray for these rescuers, God. We just pray that you would keep them safe, God, that they would be successful, that there would be miracles all throughout this situation, God, all throughout this tragedy, that we would see your hand, God, in a miraculous way. God, we just, there were people that survived, like half of that building collapsed, the other half did not those other half of people and some of the people on the half that collapsed were able to escape God that is miraculous and God we just pray we pray for all these government officials and city officials God that have this burden God this this tragedy God that it rests on them right now God I just pray that you would give them guidance and wisdom and just help them I have heard some people praying God I have heard some really good things I have heard some great testimony from Florida about people's loved ones that they know are with you God we just pray that you would be with these people that you would send people that would be the hands and feet of Jesus, that would be the love and compassion of Jesus, and that they would feel that all around them, God. I can't imagine what this would feel like, God, and I don't want to, but God, I just pray that you would be with them. And I pray that you would be with others that have lost loved ones, God, that you would just give them peace, comfort, and strength. And God, I pray for truth in our country. God, I pray for truth to rise above all the lies that are being told. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, so friends, I do believe in miracles. But God's in control and God's in, in charge. And uh, God has a plan and purpose for everyone that is in that rubble, everyone that escaped, he has a plan and purpose for. And he loves them. He loves them. So, what do I want to do first? I think I want to share these lyrics first. And God wanted me to read these lyrics. I was going to sing this song one time, and I'm thinking about maybe singing it now. I'm sure I, I have a music somewhere. All I have to do is download it to my computer and put some pictures and lyrics to it. Okay, so this song is What Faith Can Do uh, by Cutlass, and it's about 10, 11 years old. It's not a new song. But I love the lyrics to this song, and this song has ministered to me so many times in my life. And uh, I just wanted to share that with you. Everybody falls sometimes. Gotta find the strength to rise from the ashes and make a new beginning. Anyone can feel the ache. You think it's more than you can take. 
That is so true. But you're stronger, stronger than you know. Don't you give up now. The sun will sh soon be shining. You've got to face the clouds to find the silver lining. And I've seen dreams that move the mountains, hope that doesn't ever end, even when the sky is falling. I've seen miracles just happen. I have seen miracles just happen. Silent prayers get answered. Broken hearts become brand new. That's what faith can do. It doesn't matter what you've heard. Impossible is not a word. Impossible is not a word. I mean, God is the God of the impossible. That's not in the lyrics. I was just saying that. It's just a reason for someone not to try. Everybody's scared to death when they decide to take that step out on the water. It'll be all right. Life is so much more then what your eyes are seeing, you will find your way if you keep believing. Then the chorus again, I've seen dreams that move the mountains, hope that doesn't ever end, even when the sky is falling. I've seen miracles just happen, silent prayers get answered, broken hearts become brand new. That's what faith can do, overcome the odds. If you don't have a chance, that's what faith can do. When the world says you can't, it'll tell you that you can. And then again the chorus. And then the end says, even if you fall sometimes, you will have the strength to rise. So if I could share this with anyone in Florida that's going through this tragedy, this unplanned tragedy that I don't think anybody saw coming. Please just take the hand of Jesus. He'll lead you through. He will lead you through. Okay, so this is what I said about this song this morning. I love this song and message by Cutlass, What Faith Can Do. This song has ministered to me personally so many times. I even have a slideshow of Seth set to this song. I do. I may just use my slideshow and uh, put lyrics to it. These lyrics are so true and I have personally lived them. I have lived every bit of that. I have been up against impossible things. But God made things possible. And I know many others have too. I mean, this is just not my testimony. Many people have experienced miracles in their lives. Um, we need miracles in Florida. Our brothers and sisters are in pain. I believe that God can and will already has performed many miracles in Florida where this building collapsed. Ten stories. Actually, it's twelve. I heard today it was 12. 10 stories of half of the building and there's another building that completely collapsed also. And um, it's just in a heap. They're just in a heap because all the floors collapsed on top of each other. Apparently the foundation gave way and just everything collapsed. It was so sad. We need to keep our faith strong in prayers. God's heart moves when we pray. It looks impossible, I know, but God is the God of the impossible. He is the God of the impossible. Everybody must be recovered, just like 9-11. I don't know if you were alive for 9-11 or if you are my age and you remember 9-11. But it takes time. It takes time. Many don't remember or were born after 9-11. I think many of the younger generation, they just heard about it. They just read about it in the history books. 
but they didn't experience the days that it took to recover people, the highs and lows of them finding people and all the people that put pictures up of their family members. I remember that. The rescue and recovery is dangerous for the rescuers and takes time to avoid a higher death toll during this disaster. If they just go in there with a bunch of equipment, you know, they could kill people that could possibly be alive. They have to dig them out. It's just like all the earthquakes that you see in other countries. They can't just jump in there with a bunch of equipment and clear it out. They have to dig people out. Um, praying for alive rescues. This is my prayer. I'm praying for alive rescues, recovery of the deceased, and for peace, comfort, and strength for all family members, rescuers, government officials, and anyone personally impacted by this great tragedy. I have heard powerful testimony coming from people about their loved ones being with Jesus. Some people do know that their family members are gone, but many of them have said that their family members were saved and they know where they are. So seek your comfort in Jesus. He is, if he is not your savior, if Jesus is not your savior today, I lost my place. Call upon him and be saved now. Jesus is the only path to heaven. Jesus is the only way. Um, and forgiveness of sin. The time is short. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish. John 3, 16 through 21. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved. So that's my prayer. My prayer is that these people, they find the people that are still alive. That there are miraculously people alive. You know, I was thinking this afternoon, there's been a lot of rain during this recovery, which has made things slower. But what if there are people alive in there, and they're able to get just a little bit of water while they're in there? That could save their life. You know, that could be a miraculous happening from God for him to send rain when the rain is needed for them to drink. Well, let's look up some scripture about miracles. Because I like to back up everything I say with scriptures. Okay, my scriptures are over here. forgot that I'm not printing things off anymore because I need paper. I need to order me some. That's what I need to do. Alright, so let's go to Matthew 17.20. Oh, I went past Matthew. And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Howbeit this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. You know, maybe that's something that we need to be doing also, is fasting for these people. We are praying. Maybe it requires fasting too. But we just have to have the faith of a grain of a mustard seed, which is so, so tiny. So tiny. But our prayers do move the heart of God. They do move his heart. Okay, let's read Luke. I can't read my hand, handwriting. Luke 9, 16 through 17. Yeah, 
16 through 17. Luke 9. Okay, this is this is when Jesus fed the multitudes. So I'm going to start in 9:13. But he said unto them, Give ye them to eat. And they said, We have no more but five loaves and two fishes, except ye sh we should go and buy meat for all this people. For they were about 5,000 men. That's just men. There were women and children there too. So you know that more than likely, it's way more than 10,000 people. Because if every man had a woman, had a wife, which maybe not everyone did, but that's like double. Okay. So what a miracle. I lost my place. 5,000, and he said to his disciples, Make them sit down by fifties in a company. And they did so, and made them all sit down. Then he took the five loaves and the two fishes, and looking up to heaven, he blessed them, and brake, and gave to the disciples to set before the multitude. And they did eat, and were all filled, and there was taken up of fragments that remained to them twelve baskets. And it came to pass that he was alone, praying. His disciples were with him, and he asked them, Whom say the people I am? They answering said, John the Baptist, but some say Elias, and others say that one of the old prophets is risen again. He said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? Peter answering said, The Christ of God. And he straightly charged them and commanded them to tell no man that thing. So he wasn't ready. He wasn't ready to tell everyone who he was. But don't you know, those people that ate that day, that multitude, that was miraculous. That was so miraculous. But that's God. And that's Jesus. Jesus performed this miracle. And Jesus is still performing miracles. Okay, so let's move on to John 6, 2. Yeah, John 6, 2. I'm kind of jumping around. I could have done these in order, but I just didn't. Okay, John 6, 2. I'm going to start with 1. After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias, and a great multitude followed him, because they saw his miracles, which he did on them, that were diseased. And Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes, and saw a great company come unto him, he saith unto Philip, When shall we buy bread that these may eat? Okay, this is the same miracle. But he had been performing miracles before. And so this is John's account of the same miracle that we just read about in Luke. Um, he was getting popular because people were talking about the miracles that he was performing. The people that he was healing. All the people that um, he was saving. Everything that he was saying, they were learning from him. 
Okay, so let's move on to Mark. Going backwards. Mark 6, 49 through 50. I don't think it's the same account, but it might be. Six, because Jesus performed many, many miracles. Okay, so this was after he fed the, the thousands. Uh, let's start with 46. 6, 46. And when he had sent them away, he departed into a mountain to pray. See, Jesus spent a lot of time by himself during his ministry time praying by himself. He would go up into the mountains and he would pray by himself. And when evening was come, the ship was in the midst of the sea and he alone on the land. And he saw them toiling and rowing for the wind was contrary unto them and about the fourth watch of the night he cometh unto them, walking upon the sea, and would have passed by them. But when they saw him walking upon the sea, they supposed it had been a spirit, and they cried out. For they all saw him, and were troubled, and immediately he talked with them, and saith unto them, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And he went up unto them into the ship. And the wind ceased, and they were sore amazed in themselves beyond measure, and wondered. For they considered not the miracle of the loaves, for their heart was hardened. And when they had passed over, they came into the land of Gennesaret, and drew to the shore. And when they were come out of the ship, straight away they knew him, and ran through that whole region round about and began to carry about in beds those that were sick where they heard he was so see he they knew they knew the rumor was out that Jesus had healed many I don't know how they, they didn't have social media, they didn't have Facebook, they didn't have email, they didn't even have a snail mail. I don't know how the word got out, but the word got out that he was healing people. So when he went places, people were there, they were already ready. They had their sick, they laid the sick in the streets and besought him that they might touch, if it were but the border of his garment. And as many as touched him were made whole. That's a miracle. All they had to do was touch his garment. And they were made whole. Wow. What a miraculous God we have. Mark 11, 24. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. And when ye stand praying, forgive, if ye have aught against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. But if ye do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. So we have to forgive people. I'm going to skip up to 23. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when you pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. 
You know, I think sometimes when we do pray, we're praying for a miracle, and we don't believe it's possible. I think that we have to have that faith of a mustard seed, or we really have to believe that it is possible. You know, God performed so many miracles throughout the Bible. He uh, parted the sea. He... Um, he defeated Israel's enemies so many times. What else did he do? I know he did more. I know he did a lot more. He is the God of miracles. You know, just us being here, just the fact that we have the ability to breathe, that our bodies work in such a miraculous way is a miracle. That is miraculous too. Okay, did I already read that? Yeah, I did. Okay, let's move on to Acts 4.31. We'll talk about another miracle when the Holy Spirit came. Okay, Acts 4.31 says, And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that aught of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lacked, for as many as were possessors of land or houses sold them, and bought the prices, and brought the prices of the things that were sold, and laid them down at the apostles' feet. And distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. And Hos Hos Joseph, who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite and of the country of Cyprus, having laid, sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. So they were all in one accord through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was giving them that one accord. And they sold everything they had and brought all the money to the apostles. And they were of one, one heart and one soul. Oh, my child is here. My child has come. All right, one, uh, two more. Acts 19. Acts 19, 11 uh, says this. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons and the diseases departed from them and the evil spirits went out of them so through Paul God was able to perform miracles through the hands of Paul and diseases were healed and evil spirits were removed so that is miraculous too the last one is 1 Corinthians 
1228. And all apostles are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, have all the gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. Okay, I'm going to read more of that. I'm going to start with because it's talking about the church being one body. All right, uh, 12, we'll start with 22. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary, and those members, ooh, feeble, older, were necessary. <laughs> and those members of the body which we think to be less honorable Upon these we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked, that there should be no schism in the body, but that... the members should have the same care for one another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. And God hath set some in the church first, apostles secondarily, prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, governments, diversities of tongues, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, have all the gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret, but covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. So we, through the Holy Spirit, can do miracles too if that's God's will if that's God's will for us through the Holy Spirit to lay our hands on someone and heal them then we have that capability through the Holy Spirit not ourselves but through the Holy Spirit we do all right so that was the last verse that I'm gonna read so now it is time to do the salvation message. Hmm. Let's do faith. F. Oh, excuse me. Let's spell out faith. Faith visit outline. Who does this? Oh, Lifeway. Okay. I don't know if I've done this one before. This is Lifeway. My other camera just doesn't pick up words real well. Okay, so... Okay, so I guess this is how it starts out. In your personal opinion, what do you understand it takes for a person to go to heaven? So that's just a question. I'd like to share with you how the Bible answers this question if it is all right, there is a word that can be used to answer this question. Faith. F-A-I-T-H. Faith. F is for forgiveness. We cannot have eternal life in heaven without God's forgiveness. In Him, meaning Jesus, we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. Wow. Ephesians 1 7 a a is for available forgiveness is available it is available for all for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life John 3 16 but not automatic 
not everyone who says to me, hey Seth, stop. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 7, 21a. I is for impossible. We talked about the God of the impossible. You know, God is the God of the impossible. I is for impossible. It is impossible for God to allow sin into heaven. God is love. John 3, 16. Just for judgment is without mercy. James 2, 13. Man is sinful, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3, 23. And then here's a question. But how can a sinful person enter heaven where God allows no sin? So T. T is for turn. Uh, if you were driving down the road and someone asked you to turn, what would he or she be asking you to do? Change direction. So T is for turn. Turn from something, sin and self. Turn means repent. But unless you repent, you will all likewise uh, perish. Luke 13, 3b. Turn to someone, trust Christ only. The Bible tells us that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Talk about an awesome miracle. God raised Jesus from the dead. Um, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 9. So H. H is for heaven. Heaven is eternal life. Here I come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. John 10, 10. Hereafter, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that here I am there you may be also. John 14, 3. H is for how. How can a person have God's forgiveness, heaven and eternal life, and Jesus as personal Savior and Lord? Explain based... Okay. Forsaking all, I trust him. That's another. Forsaking all, I trust him. That's good, too. I like that. How can a person have God's forgiveness? Okay, I already read that. Uh, the invitation. Understanding what we have shared, would you like to receive this forgiveness by trusting in Christ as your personal Savior and Lord? And if your answer is yes, then let's do this simple prayer, this simple salvation prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I admit that I am a sinner. Please forgive me. You can just repeat it after me. I believe that you are God's one and only Son that came to teach, heal, love, and forgive. You died on the cross for all sinners. You rose from the tomb on the third day. You ascended into heaven, and you will come back to usher your church into heaven. I confess you as my Savior, inviting you into my heart to live and reign forever. Thank you for the gift of salvation. Please give me the strength to withstand the temptations in my life. Help me to praise and glorify you daily. And help me to grow my relationship with you daily. Through Bible study and prayer.
In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So if you said that prayer and you accepted Jesus as your Savior, your faith is beginning. Your faith will grow. Faith grows. Faith grows through the miracles that we see and the experiences that we have in our lives. Our faith will grow. Our faith will grow as we read the Bible, as we pray and see our prayers answered, and as we praise. So if you said that prayer, your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life and the angels are rejoicing. I'm sorry, my nose is just... Alright, I'm going to do the, the blessing from God in Numbers 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. We all need peace. All right. So it's time to pray. And I've got to go attend to my child over there. God, we just thank you for this time. We thank you for the scriptures. We thank you for all the miracles that you've performed, God. There's so many. You fed, you fed the, you fed the Israelites in the wilderness. You led them by cloud and by fire. You supplied water and food to them. There's just so many, God, that you have performed. And God, you still perform miracles. They are still going on every day, every day. Little and big and in-between miracles, God, they're all from you. Just the fact that we can breathe, God, is a miracle. God, I just thank you. I just praise you for all the many blessings that you've bestowed upon me personally. And everyone on here, God, again, we pray for the people in Florida. God, we just pray that you would be with them, that they would feel your presence. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, all right, pray and share, warriors. Have an awesome rest of your night. <clears throat> Excuse me. And an awesome Tuesday. And much love and cyber hugs. Till we meet again, good night.